Hi everybody. Welcome. How have you been? Susie Reno here with uh, video number five, if you can believe that. Okay. I am going to get started right away. Um, I've had a busy month. My youngest graduated from high school and promptly headed to a summer job in the Grand Tetons in the state of Wyoming is working at a marina at the Signal Mountain Lodge uh, near Moran, Wyoming. And I guess there is a small following of floss tube watchers there. So if you are at the Signal Mountain Lodge in Moran, Wyoming, Heidi Ho, uh, nice to see you. Wear your life jackets and carry your bear spray. All right, I'm looking forward to going and visiting um, out there next uh, next month. My husband and I are headed out there for a visit to check it all out and see what it's about. See what our youngest has been up to. So um, I thought I'd film outside again this time because um, I just like the birds and summer in Minnesota is so darn short that I just thought, what the heck, we'll just use the use the good light and, and uh, go from there. So there were a couple things I wanted to, a couple people I wanted to say thank you to. These were other floss tubers that were kind enough to mention my channel in their channel or in one of their videos. So thank you so much to the following people. Uh, Pam and Steph uh, gave me a little shout out. Um, they are, I'm sure, elbow deep in StitchCon right now. So I hope they are having a ball. Uh, Cindy from Cindy's Cross Stitch. Tiffany from Express Life Tifa, Samantha from Crafting Between Stitches, Sandy Bacus mentioned me in her channel, and Kay from Kay's Cross Stitch. So thank you all. I know that you hear all the time about what a wonderful community the Floss Tube community is, but genuinely, um, everybody is so very nice and welcoming. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, Train had a couple of shout outs. Train actually didn't make it in my last video either because we filmed it outside so he's actually sleeping right on the other side of the sliding glass door because you know cats sleep 16 hours a day. What a life honestly. Um, so he had some people and Train's shout outs are always people who have mentioned him in, in the comments of, of the videos and everything so he just wanted to say thank you to Pat Matejcik, uh Leslie Hurley, Stitchin Texan, McKenna from Stitching and Sequins, Jen uh, the Long Dog Stitcher, Diana Ballard, Treehouse Stitcher, Cindy again from Cindy's Cross Stitch, Trisha B. And these last three, I can't remember if I mentioned them in a prior video or not, but I'd rather mention them twice than not at all. So uh, Mendy Evans, Helen D, who told me that she once named a cat when she was a child that she named a cat Poopsie Doopsie. So that makes uh, Train's name seem fairly normal. So thanks for that, Helen. Uh, and the last one, Susanna in New Zealand, um, she suggested that Train have his own floss tube show or YouTube channel, perhaps. And I, can't, I was trying to think what would Train's YouTube channel look like. I think it would be um, discussions about birds and bird watching, perhaps uh, bug catching and spider eating, and maybe which spiders taste best. Um, I'm picturing a segment on shedding and uh, another perhaps on butt licking. So I don't know. I don't know if anybody's ready for that yet. So, so we'll just keep that on the back burner for now. Um, there's another segment that I'm, I'm kind of um, going to, I don't know, maybe informally start, or as I have tips and tricks, maybe I'll share them. But last video, I shared um, a thread separation technique. So um, it, when it was based on uh, Chelsea was separating her floss in such a bizarre way. She said she like tucks it under her arm and then like, you know, peels it away. And I, I shared with uh, on my next video then how to separate a strand of um, embroidery floss out so you know go back and watch video number four if you missed that tip um, 
because I thought, well, maybe there are other people that don't know how to separate a strand. And I was surprised at the amount of people who commented and said that they didn't know that trick. So I'm glad that I was able to share that. I'm glad that I did share that so that everybody's on the same page. But anything that makes our life easier when it comes to stitching, I am totally on board with. Um, so I have another one that I wanted to share. And I have utilized this so, so, so much in all of my years of stitching. And I learned this at a class that I took, oh gosh, in the early 90s. I think it was at the um, Spirit of Cross Stitch Festivals, if any of you were you know, around back then and, and have ever heard of those. But they were a really neat. I mean, it was, it was probably similar to, you know, kind of like a, oh, I, I, get, I don't know. I mean, it was just a big convention cross stitch and cross stitch was much bigger in the 90s than it is now but um so i learned this there and i will just share it with you now keep in mind this trick only works if you are stitching with two strands of floss or four i mean if you it's just an even number um and the way and, and what we're going to do is it's a way to start off your stitching so um, I'm taking just a, a piece of, I've already got a piece of floss all separated out here. It's a dark color, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but um, I've got an end here and an end here. I'm putting the ends together, okay? So on this end, and here's what I'll do. Oops, I got a bug on my Ada cloth here. And I've got this really big Ada so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I've, <laughs> I've got a bug that's really wanting to land on it. Anyway, okay, so here's the two strands. Now on the other end here, we have, I can't find it here, if I can get it separated, is a little loop. You see the loop, everybody? Okay, so what I'm going to do is the end with the two strands, that part is going to go through the eye of my needle. Okay, so I'm going to thread that into my needle here. Okay, so can you see at the end that's through the needle there? So on this end, I've got my, I think you can see that there's my two strands there, right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's, oops, I have a bug biting my leg. Forgive me, mosquito. So what we're going to do is, uh, and I'll try to do a close up here. So I'm going to come up through one of the holes, and you can see on the bottom, I think you can see, maybe not bottom is my loop okay can you see my my loop there I believe you can it's hard for me to see because the Sun is so bright it kind of blinds you so so there is my my little loop okay I'm gonna come down and when I come down before I pull whoops before I pull this through I'm going to make a slip knot so I'm just essentially slipping my needle with the two ends through this loop and I am making a slip knot and that's the lower leg of my stitch and now I will come up right here and make the rest of my X and you can see I'll come back down here so you can see that on the back it's just held in place with a slip knot so I don't know if anybody has ever seen that um, trick before. Probably some of you have, but like I said, it only works. Oops! All these bugs are just gathering on me here. Um, it it only works if you use two strands of floss. So if you're using one strand, you can't use this technique to start. You have to you know hide it under your other stitches. But um, I think it's a really neat way to to start your stitches, and I've used it for years and years and years. So um, that's my, my tip for this week. Um, I have one other uh, one that I use. Um, so oftentimes when you are stitching, you and you use um, fancy floss especially, um, what I do is I use just a regular old hole punch. And I punch another hole in the floss card so that when I take a strand out, instead of putting it back in with the others, I keep it separated. And then I know that I have one started. So you can see that I've got one 
like on all of mine. So when I start a project, I punch another, and I have fancy floss, I punch another hole, and that's where I can put um, the ones that I've used so that I don't have to put them back in. Because sometimes they can be kind of hard to like separate out again um, once you put them with the common... Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. There is a squirrel that is being berated by a couple of robins in the tree over there. <laughs> I've never seen that. Um, anyway, but that's my, my other little tip. And it, you know, then, then you know it's, you know, like these, and these, for example, are like little tiny, like here's a little short one on the chalk. So this one, it's like not enough to throw away. I can't waste that. But I'm sure there's going to be a part in the pattern coming up where I'm just going to need a little bit of white for a section. And I'll take that one off then, you know. So, um, yeah, that's just my little, my little way of managing my little tails. So take it or leave it. Um, and then I found one little gadget that some of you might find helpful. If not for stitching, because the... I wish the light was a little bit brighter for stitching, but it's a neat idea. So this is called a magnet light, okay? It came in the package like this. I bought it at Target. I think it was like six bucks or eight bucks or something like that. And what this is, it's magnetic. So you can put this on your shirt and then turn it on. And I don't know if you can see with the sun and everything, but it is on. Um, and you can like sit and stitch and you'll have light. So if your light is not great, um, I don't know if you can even see the light on there. No, you can kind of see it. But yeah, you just push that button and it goes on and off. So the battery in it, you can change the battery by the way. Um, it is supposed to last for 15 hours and it is 30 lumens. So it might be nice for um, reading in the car or something, um, or if, you know, for those of you who don't get car sick doing that. But um, yeah, I thought I would mention it. Like I said, I, I bought it at Target. It was under $10. And uh, it just, it might help you with your stitching a little bit if the ambient light or if your lighting is poor and, or you just maybe want to try with, you know, stitching in the car with it. Um, I, like I said, it, I wish it was just a little bit brighter. It's certainly not an ot light. But um, it helps. It does help. So, okay. Onward to my whips. So the first one that I will start with is this one. This is the American Flag Quilt Sampler. You can see that I have Pennsylvania done now in addition to Delaware. So that is coming along nicely. Um, my original goal was to do one a week. And I have revised that goal. Um, Misty and I, I was kind of joking with Misty Purcell who is stitching um, this with me. And I'm doing a version of it. Um, this is what it looks like. And I am doing just the, the quilt squares. One quilt square for every state. So, um, and Min, uh, Misty is doing the whole thing. She's stitching that entire flag. Um, I told her that I didn't want her to feel bad if I was stitching one a week and because she said this is probably going to take me three years so I said I'll just do one block a month then so that you don't feel bad that I'm finishing first so um, and actually the real reason I'm only doing one block a month is because the the pattern that there, well there's there's a lot of fractional stitches on it and by fractional stitches, I mean like half stitches and quarter stitches and um, to make those angles. And the pattern doesn't have them charted. So it necessarily, it just kind of has a blank square and it lets you kind of determine how you want to make your fractional stitches. So you can make as many or as few as you want. Um, but of course, you know, it, so it, it is kind of a fussy thing. Once you get, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's just one of those things where it requires some thinking, and it's not one where you can just, like, you know, watch TV and do it. It's, it's one where you have to kind of concentrate and get it down so that you know where your fractional stitches are. So, um, so yeah, one a month is going to be my goal for those blocks. So, um, the next one I have, I've made some good progress on. 
This is Bent Creek's Autumn Arches pattern and I'm stitching it over one. And mine, so this is what I've done on it so far. So I've got my arches all done and now I'm just filling them in. So I finished up, I don't think the last time you saw this, I finished stitching this tree and then I got this oak leaf and this um, acorn all finished. It's turning out really cute. I always liked them over one. Um, I have the spring one done and I also have the summer one finished. So this is autumn and then I just have one to go after that which is the winter one. And this is being stitched on 25 count Lugana I believe it is. So I'm pretty sure that's what I'm stitching. It's one of the Luganas, I don't know. And I think there's Am I not? I, I keep. I, I need to keep. I, I keep saying this, but I need to fact check it. I don't know if Lugana is all 25 or if there's a 25 and a 28. I don't know, but for some reason that's in my head. I don't know if that's accurate or not, so don't quote me on that. But I think that's 25 count Lugana, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, the next one I have been working on. Um, I did this one on. I wanted to try out the sulky threads. The sulky threads are the ones that come on the spool. And you know what? I didn't grab it. It's right inside, but I didn't grab it. But I, I talked about it in my last video, so you can see it then. But that is, this is Witch Witch from La Dee Da. And I wanted to try the sulky threads out. And so this is my start on that one. The linen that I'm stitching it, the linen I'm stitching it on is called, um, 29 count Glen she linen from Hearts Content and it's I think Vermont Fieldstone is the name of it and I don't think it is um, available anymore the uh, Maureen from the Hearts Content used to dye it and I have just you know years ago and I picked up some at market a few years ago and so I um, I've had it in my stash and I just thought it's got it's got sort of a like a purplish hue to it. It just looks really Halloween-y. And this piece was just like screaming to be stitched on, um, to have this stitched on it. So that's what I did. Um, so that is, that's that one. Um, the sulky threads, I'm enjoying them. I think they're nice. They glide through really nicely. Um, you wouldn't want to use one strand of the sulky thread equals two strands of regular embroidery floss. So on very fine counts like, you know, 30, 36 to 40, I think the sulky would look real um, bulky. The other thing I've noticed about the sulky, which doesn't bother me, but I could see it bothering others, is um, your your two it, it's the same like I said it's the same thickness as two strands of embroidery floss two strands of embroidery floss lay side by side like this where the sulky is more um, it's twisted together so it sticks up a little higher because it's it's um, um, wound together if that makes any sense so it doesn't lay as flatly as embroidery floss does when there when there's two strands um, so I don't know I'll hold it up one more time so you can kind of see you I don't think you can even really tell I think it looks great and it's it's fun and easy to stitch with you just you know take it off the roll and um, thread it in your needle and and off you go so I think it's it's really a fun floss to use for monochromatic samplers um, and then the last one is the Sally Spencer sampler, which everybody and their brother is working on this one. But I've had this one in my stash for a long time, and I thought, what better excuse to start it than a stitch along? So, so here's what I'm doing on my Sally. Stand up here so I can see where I'm lining it up here. So, and I'm doing eyelet stitches, as you can see. And they're very fun. So that's that one. That's Sally. Sally Spencer. It's a fun one. I love those colors. I couldn't wait to get to that red. Um, that's just a. I don't know. I was just. I, I stitched my whole my whole line of letters, and uh, and then I got to that red, and I was like, Yay, 
I get to do the red. Um, my English paper piecing quilt. Okay, so this one, and there's been a lot of you that have um, shown an interest in starting English paper piecing, and there's a ton of tutorials out there. So if you're interested, it's fun. It's addicting. Um, it's, uh, it can, <laughs> as I found out this week, it can be kind of frustrating. So I have to share with everybody, I, I kind of put this in time out because I made a mistake and it was totally my mistake. So um, I had finished my entire row. Remember I, last time I had this, this whole row was finished, okay? And this is gonna be hard for you to see probably, but I'll try to hold it up. So I had my row done and my next step was to attach it to the rest of my quilt, okay? So I got halfway done. And when I held it up and laid, stepped back and looked at it, I don't know if you can see, but there are these squares here that are tumbling blocks, okay? When I looked at it compared to the rest of the quilt, you can see that tumbling block right there, I put this row on the wrong direction it should have been the other direction. And I know you're gonna say, who is going to notice, but your eye really sees it. Um, because the blocks, I mean, that's the perspective, the dark, this navy is supposed to be in the corner, in the opposite corner. So your eye sees that the block is tumbling a different direction and it's gonna look funny. So I spent two hours getting this halfway stitched on and I'm going to have to take out all this stitching and flip the row over and start over. Now it wasn't wasted time. I'm sure I improved my English paper piecing skills. I had a lovely visit with my mom um, with the, over the two hours that I did this with her. Um, she was sewing in her sewing room and I was sitting in the chair in the corner just working away. So we had a nice visit for two hours. It was not wasted time. Is it frustrating? Yes. It would have been nice to just be able to spend another two hours with her and finish the other side, but so be it. Such is life. Um, and that's how you learn. And now the next time I go to put on another um, row, I'm going to check and double check. So. So that's where I'm at with that. Let me see what else. Oh, my very last thing. So good. I'm glad I'm keeping this short because I, again, I, I try to, you know, keep my, my um, video short because I don't have a lot of time to watch, you know, hour long videos. So I always, anyway, I've said that before. I'll shut up. Keep it short stupid, right? Isn't that what kiss? Keep it simple, stupid, or short in my case. Okay. Um, my last order of business is I got a um, email from YouTube uh, about a week and a half ago and they said congratulations you have reached a thousand subscribers which absolutely blows my mind. I can't imagine there are a thousand people out there that want to watch this but um, whatever. I, there's, I love watching other people so again I I think it's great. Thank you to every one of my subscribers, to all of you that watch, even if you're not a subscriber. Um, I think it's awesome. So to thank you for um, being a subscriber, I'm going to have a little giveaway. Um, I am going to give away, there's going to be three things. One is a stitching bag made by yours truly. There will be options to choose from, so I'm not going to ch um, show the, the project bag um, because there will be options. But it's the standard project bag, um, like a, a Mama Joan type looking bag. Um, I think uh, Making Life Count is, is the one who does the tutorial on those. So um, I, it will be made by yours truly. So. Um, also, I am giving away, and I could have brought these, but I found um, some a new flavor of M&Ms called Strawberry Nut, and um, I bought a package, and they are good. So I am going to include a package of those for my um, in my giveaway for whoever is the winner. 
And um, lastly, a, this is the best prize probably, will be a $25 gift certificate to Jen's Stitching Niche on Etsy. So um, that, will, that will be the grand prize in the giveaway. So $25 gift card to Jen's Stitching Niche, a um, project bag, and a bag of strawberry nut M&Ms, okay? Now here's what you have to do to enter the giveaway. Um, I know you know all these rules because you hear it all the time when you hear from other floss tubers, but don't say the word giveaway in the comments and uh, because people will Google the word giveaway and um, then the prize goes to someone um, that has, you know really doesn't need it or appreciate it. So don't say giveaway in your comment. Um, be a subscriber, uh, be 18 years or older, and the question that I want you to answer is, um, we all enjoy stitching. I know that's why we're all here. We all enjoy cross stitch. But I want to know, what else do you enjoy besides stitching? Um, I want you to say um, in the comments, I enjoy whatever it is. So, I enjoy blanking. And let's keep it PG rated, please. So, sorry. <laughs> that I, I understand how that might sound. I enjoy blanking, but it, it it has to end in an ing. Okay. So I enjoy flossing, flossing my teeth. I don't know. Whatever, whatever it is. Um, tell me how else you like to spend your time um, besides stitching. I want to know what else you all like to do. So that is it for my floss tube this time. I hope you all have a wonderful um, few weeks. I, I've been checking in about once a month. So I hope that is working for all of you. It's working for me. And um, because I'm not a real fast stitcher, I think it gives me ample time to kind of work on things and show my progress. So um, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Enjoy your summer. Enjoy StitchCon, everybody. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.